Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, Bumper here. Um, today I'm going to be doing a video showing off all my um, sign merch memorabilia from the people who I've met, you know, over the years, being on the movie scene, going to festivals. It's all basically horror stuff because, you know, that's what I'm really into. Um, yeah, so I did say I was going to do this video the other day, so if you have been um, looking forward to seeing it, then here we go. Alright, so I'll start off with the smaller stuff. Okay, so in 2010, I went to this film festival, Fight Fest. I've actually been four or five times since, and a handful of times of their Halloween special. It's in the Empire Cinema in London. Um, it used to have a 2,000-seater screen. It was huge, but they have knocked it down now and um, changed it into two. One of them's like an IMAX, one of them's like a super screen. So that was in 2014. So I went to the last one, uh, but that was the last time I went. I started having kids and all that. And there's my lanyards there from the different times that I went to. They're pretty cool. Anyway, so this year, 2010, this was the best year for guests. Um, they give you like this um, program and then you can get your autographs in here if you want so I'll just skip to the page alright this is the first page alright this is at the world premiere of the movie Hatchet 2 so Hatchet 2 is directed by Adam Green it stars Kane Hodder who's played Jason it stars Tony Todd who's Candyman Danielle Harris who's been in loads of horrors like Halloween the Rob Zombie ones and the older ones and it's directed by Adam Green Okay, so at the top there, we've got Adam Green's signature, 2010. By here, you've got Tony Todd. Here is Kane Hodder. He's got Victor underneath, so you know he's Victor Crowley. And over here, it's a bit difficult to see, but you can see all the love hearts and everything. That's Danielle Harris, okay? So all these people were great, especially Kane Hodder. I didn't speak to Danielle Harris for long. One thing I did pick up on is how short she was. She's four foot and a fag end, fair dues. Um, but I was a bit intimidated talking to her because she's quite good looking in real life. Um, Tony Todd had a bit of a chat there. He was cool, but um, just surrounded by people. Kane Hodder, amazing. Can't fault him enough. So, yeah, this is Hatchet 2. And that's a good um, selection of signatures here from that movie. Okay, so I'm just going to flick through. This is from a movie called F. Okay, this had a premiere. This was directed by Johannes Roberts, who went on to do the Resident Evil um, remake. And he's also done loads of um, director DVD horrors and things since, well, since this movie F. He'd done the Strangers sequel, Pray at Midnight. So that's his signature there. Bit of a story behind that one. He was in such a rush. When I stopped him for a signature, he sort of went a bit swift, and I sort of looked at it and said, what is that? And he was like, oh, I'm sorry, do you want me to do it again? But I was like, no, don't worry, you better see you're busy. Um, there's a couple of other ones here. There's um, David Schofield, he's a British actor. Is his up by there? You can't really make it out, but he's been in lots of TV stuff and everything. And there's also a girl here. She was in Hollyoaks. I think her name's Eliza Bennett. Um, so, yeah, that's a cool one. Then we got this movie here, 13 Hours. This was a low-budget werewolf movie, British werewolf movie, okay? So this is the director at the top. That's um, Gemma Atkinson, who again was in Hollyoaks and is a bit of a, you know, sh bit, not British royalty-like, but she's well-known in Britain, isn't she? She's a bit of a, a lad's girl-like, you know. She's done some other films since, the Diana Toff Pass, whatever it's called. My man um, Trev over on Double Bill Movies, done that as a, a recommended movie so that's good and then there's another actress in it then as well her name's Isabel Catthorne so that's her signature there as well so met all those Gemma Atkinson was great in fact she was behind me in the queue for popcorn just before this movie started and I turned around and seen her and I was like oh well may as well let you go in front of me sort of thing well, I'm gonna buy her popcorn for her that's for sure she got more money than me and then the last one in here even though I've seen 30 odd films at Fight Fest this is probably the best after Hatchet 2. Okay, so this is the premiere of The Last Exorcism. This was the final movie on the closing night, and they were all there, okay? So we got... It's difficult to know which one's which, okay? But I think I do. So the top one is Eli Roth. So Eli Roth is the director of Cabin Fever, uh, Hostel, really big on the horror scene. He produced this movie. He was there in the flesh. He was great. Then we got... The next one was um, the director, Daniel Starm. Okay, so he was a good director. He was once penciled in to do the remake of Martyrs, but I don't think it ever happened with him. Uh, he directed Last Exorcism, obviously. Then we got Ashley Bell. Okay, Ashley Bell is the girl who's in The Last Exorcism. Now, cheeky little fact about The Last Exorcism and Ashley Bell is she's a bit of a contortionist. So every thing you see in the movie, she does. There's no camera effects, no CGI, all the 
weird position she gets herself in. She does all that herself. She gave us a bit of a um, run through at the film festival as well. That was great. And then the last one on you, if I'd known how big this actor was going to become, I probably would have got something else signed on his own. But this is Caitlin, Caitlin Landry jones He's gone on to do loads of films. He's a terrific actor, fair dues. And he was really great in person as well. Really nice guy. He does play a bit of a knob in most of his films. But um, yeah, so I was really... Um, special night that was that premiere I've got to be honest really felt like you were mingling with the stars there uh, just great signatures all around especially Eli Roth absolutely amazing okay so then I'm going to move on to this one Blu-ray that I got signed this was at the same film festival but a year later I wasn't expecting this guest to be there okay and then when I seen him I quickly legged it to HMV to buy something just so I can get it signed alright so this is signed by Toby Hooper this is not a print I didn't buy this Blu-ray as a mass production with this signature already on there, I met this guy in person. He was great. So he signed this, Toby Hooper. I did notice on this when I was looking at the other day, this is actually a second sight release. This is from 2011. So I didn't know they'd been going that long. So even though I probably will upgrade this to 4K, you know, I'm never getting rid of this Blu-ray. Uh, yeah, so Toby Hooper, you know, RIP as well now. So makes it even more meaningful. So yeah, that was just great. So I'll put it right up there. There he is, Toby Hooper, top man. Okay, bit of a story behind this one. I was at the film festival and I was watching a movie and it was some sort of Mexican or Chilean drug rape bonanza thing. It was like one o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I only just had my breakfast. I was like, I just can't watch this. It's crap. So I walked out to the auditorium after I went to the movie. Only a handful of movies I've ever walked out on. And as I walked out to the auditorium, a guy I knew, my mate Mark Goddard, was stood at the bar drinking a beer. He must have walked out 10 minutes before me. And he was having a beer with Kane Hodder. And I'm not joking, this is in the Empire Cinema in London. There was no one else around, apart from the people who were working behind the counter. So I went up to them, I was like, all right. <laughs> and Kane Hodder turned around. The first thing he did, like, was buy me a bottle of Corona. I couldn't believe it, you know? Such a nice guy. And then me and my mate were there. This film was still going on. Everyone was watching it. And me and my mate were just in the lobby of the cinema, just chatting to Kane Hodder, shooting the breeze. Absolutely amazing. He's a beast of a bloke in real life. So I had to take the opportunity to get something signed. So they had a little stall over in the corner selling some merch. The only thing they had Friday the 13th related was this bad boy here. So this is a big, like, seven-inch figure. It's got an um, interchangeable head as well. But for some reason, I prefer Baghead Jason on this one. So... I went and whipped board a quick 30 odd quid and I took it to Kane Odder and he signed it. And the first thing he said to me, well, he played a joke on me first. He said, I'm not signing that. I said, why? He said, that's not the Jason I played. That's the remake Jason. I was like, oh, for God's sake. Like, they said, no, I'm only joking. And then he signed it and he wrote on there, Jason. For the life of me, I thought he wrote the real Jason. It's been so long since I've seen it. This was in storage in my mum's attic. But um, yeah, so that's Kane Hodder's signature there. Only had a pink sharp here as well. So that's great. And um, yeah, so that's amazing. So I love this figure. Now I've dug it out of storage. Uh, my kids were a bit older. They're not be scared of it. You know, this is on display now by my movies and all. So yeah, absolutely awesome. Kane Hodder, Jason. All right, so now I've got my favourite three pieces. They're, but they're big um, movie posters and I had them framed. Cost me quite a lot for the posters because, they, you know, gone are the days you go in HMV and just buy posters that relate to old school movies. It's all just whatever's modern, like Pokemon and stuff. So I had to order these online before the film festivals that I went to and just hope that I've seen the person there. Because you can kind of guess, because you can see what movies are premiering and you can just live in hope that the people who are in them or the people who made them are going to be there. So these are quite big. I'm going to have to move the phone probably. So I'm just going to put you on pause a minute and then I'll come back to you now. Okay, so this first one then, this is a movie poster from the film Ginger Snaps. Okay, I love Ginger Snaps, great movie. And I was at the film festival and they were going to do a premiere of American Mary with Catherine Isabel. So I got this Ginger Snaps poster in the hope that she would be there and yeah i lucked out so if i go closer to the signature you'll see it says to craig x and o's love Catherine isabel so that was great she was a great person Catherine isabel she was there with the soska sisters they were both amazing their movie closed the festival in the year i think it was 2012 and then afterwards we all went to a, a bar in london called the phoenix and basically they were just like one of the boys they were there all night drinking with us we were out to Abbas four in the morning, um, the Soska sisters, Catherine and Isabel, you know, they were all over us in a friendly way. They never acted snobby. They weren't bothered when drunk men were sort of like, not, not cracking onto them, but like, you know, 
picking them up and trying to have a laugh. And they just played along all the time. They were lovely. I read on the um, one of their Twitter pages and the next day they nearly missed their flight home because they were so wrecked from being in that Phoenix Cup till four o'clock in the morning. So, yeah, it was a real nice time. i got to be fair. One of the best nights of my life. So, yeah, so that's Ginger Snaps and that's signed by Catherine Isabel. OK, so this is... The original poster from the first Child's Play movie. This was really expensive to buy from a specialised poster place online. I took this with me when there was a premiere of the new Child's Play um, reboot. Well, not reboot, but when it brought out Curse of Chucky. When, you know, Cedar Chucky didn't do very well. They had a bit of a break and then Don Mancini brought it back. Okay, Don was in a bit of a rush, but he still stopped beside it for me. I think part of the reason why is because he was... Um, Excited to see the original poster. The guy who was with him, like his bodyguard, even commented to say, gosh, that's an old one. So if I just go in close on the picture, you'll see, hi, Craig, want to play Don Mancini. So Don Mancini, he directed Curse. He didn't direct this first one, but obviously he's the producer and the creator of all the Charles Play movies. You know, again, I'd have this on my wall in a shot, but my wife just won't have it at the moment. So until I get a movie um, room when we move, you know, it is just in storage, but I keep them in good condition, so they'll be all right. Okay, now this is my favourite piece of the lot. I did have to pay for this autograph at a Comic Con because, um, you know, it's just the only way I was ever going to get to meet Robert England. He wasn't ever going to be at this film festival. Although I say that, he did turn up a few years later with a British film that he'd done, um, somewhere when he works in a cinema. Showtime or something it's called, I can't really remember, the last show in, that's it, but anyway, he was in a comic con um, in Cardiff, by where I live, so I took the chance, and yeah, I'm not one for paying for autographs, I think the buzz of autographs is bumping into someone, meeting them, having the balls to go and ask them, but yeah, like I said, I just needed this in my life, so this is Nightmare on Elm Street 3, my favourite movie of all time, and then if I zoom in a bit closer, you'll see it says, to Craig, welcome to prime time, bitch, Freddy, and then it's signed by Robert England. When I took it to him, I asked him to sign it in the top corner and he insisted on signing it on the dress, which makes total sense because it's white, so you see it better. And that is the girl who gets her head slammed through the TV and when he says, welcome to Prime Dime Bits. So I'm glad someone knew what they're doing. So yeah, like I said, this is my pride and joy. This is my favourite bit of horror merch out of everything I got. I did have this one on the wall for quite a long time after my wife put her foot down, but in the end, it did end up coming down. But, you know, yeah, I just love it. It's absolutely awesome. And Robert England, nice guy. Spoke to him for a while. Asked me if he was ever going to put, put the glove back on. Told me no, but it was a long time ago now, so we live in hope. OK, so that is about it, really, for the um, sign stuff I got. But what I am going to do now is I'm just going to leave you with some photos on my phone. These are a few people I met, uh, really quite famous, but just met them on the cuff, didn't have anything for them to sign. You know, just seen them walking through the cinema lobbies and just had to go up to them and ask for their autographs. One of them I was really nervous about. He was there with his mother. I don't know what he was there for. And it really took some gall to go and ask him for his autograph. I mean, he was fine. He was happy as Larry. But, um, yeah, I just felt a bit nervous. So I'm going to run through those with you now and then. That'll be it. Thanks for watching. Bumper. First one, as you can see, is our boy Jonathan Wass. He was at the Kill List premiere. Um, if you remember, he used to work for the film show on BBC One, you know, film 2010, 2011, whatever the year was, uh, after Barry Norman. So, yeah, I met Jonathan Ross. First thing I say about this guy is he is a giant. He's leaning down here to take that photo with me. I, it makes me look like a dwarf. I'm about 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, so, yeah, I hate to think how tall Jonathan Ross is. But, yeah, super nice. So, yeah, I can't fault him. He had two lumpers of bodyguards with him as well. So, he's been nervous. But, yeah, cool. OK, now this is the one I said that I was really nervous about. OK, this is Simon Pegg. So he was walking through the Empire Cinema. It was a Kill List premiere. You can see the picture in the back. But he wasn't he wasn't there for Kill List. He was there just watching a film with his mum. So I, I wasn't going to go and say anything to him, but I just couldn't pass up on the opportunity. And like I said, he was fine. I didn't bother him for long at all. And he was happy to have the picture taken. So, yeah, that's Simon Pegg. All right. Now this guy, you might not recognise this guy. But I guarantee you right now, you know the movies he's directed, okay? This is Tom Six. So he directed, you got it, the Human Centipede trilogy. So he was at Fright Fest. He wasn't there for the premiere of um, any of the Human Centipede films. Uh, but he was just there, you know, chilling out. So, yeah, Tom Six, nice guy. Now, this is my hero. This is the picture that I just wish I had some way of blowing it up and framing it. I wish I had something signed because this is, like I said, my hero, absolute boss director. This is Gareth Evans, okay? So he directed The Raid, 1 and 2, Apostle, 
sections of VHS 2. He's got a new film coming out now with Tom Hardy. He's just an absolute... I just love him. And what makes it even better is he's from Wales as well. He's from Cardiff, way same as me. So when I went up to him, he's like, oh, I recognise your accent straight away. So yeah, you know, I'm like a kid in the sweet shop on this picture. Gareth Evans, absolute hero. Okay, so I can't remember this girl's name. I think it's Scarlet something, but she plays Lacey in the adulthood and kid adulthood films. She's also in a horror film called Panic Button. So this is a really nice photo. I mean, she's absolutely glowing on there. She's a really nice looking girl and she was really nice as well. She even added me then on Facebook afterwards. Um, so yeah, she was she was nice. Now, this is what I said about when we went to the pub after American Mary premiere. This is Catherine Isabel. Again, the photo's a bit blurry, but just see, she's all smiles. She was drinking. She was off her face by the end of it. You know, it was just a real, real good time. All right. This is another picture I really like. Okay, this is Neil Maskell. Again, this is from the premiere of Kill List. He was a really nice guy. Good bit of banter with him afterwards. Had a point and whatever. Um, I love Kill List as well. It's one of my favourite films ever. Ben Wheatley was there as well. I had a picture with Ben Wheatley, but I just don't know where he's gone. Uh, but yeah, I love this picture. He's working in Football Factory as well, fair dues. So yeah, that's me and Neil Maskell. And then this is one more signed picture I got, okay? But it's up my mum's on the wall. So it's not down in my house. So I couldn't show it like I showed the other ones. But this is, this was at the premiere of Hatchet 2, but this is Frozen. So this is signed by Adam Green. If you take a look close, it says, Craig, stay off the slopes. Adam Green, 2010. So a quick funny story with this one. When I was met, met him he had these posters on the side and I said oh I'm really psyched to see that movie so he said oh do you want one of these posters I was like yeah go on then and he said what's your name I went Craig he went huh I went Craig he went huh I went Craig he went spell it I wrote it down and then he went oh Craig I was like yeah Craig <laughs> I should have said bumper shouldn't I it would have been easier but yeah so Adam Green is a legend my dear he's got so much time for the fans you know some fans were annoying him you could see it in his face just constantly going up to him but he just always kept a smile on and I probably shouldn't say this too late but me him and Joe Lynch we smoked the spliff outside the Phoenix Bar on the one night. And I think <laughs> I think I knocked them out near enough because they, they weren't seen for very much longer that night, I've got to be fair. But um, yeah, that was a really good uh, moment in my life, that was. Um, I loved that. So yeah, I love Adam Green and I love Joe Lynch. If Joe Lynch had been there with this sign, I would have got him to sign this, even though he's nothing to do with it, but he just wasn't about it this time. So yeah, that's my frozen picture. I absolutely love it. His frame is up my mum's on the wall. And that's about it then. So thanks for watching. I hope I haven't bored you too much and uh, I'll catch you soon.